Do you think the government providing you with any facilities and more or less allowing you to continue in those circles is in any way state-sponsored hacking? Uh, were you worried about that bringing any retribution from, from other state entities? No, it wasn't sponsored hacking. There was no coercement. There was no, um, you know, hey, can you hack into Syria? It would be mm -hmm. really cool. Um, and it's, it's, it's really bugged out that I have to sit here and kind of like defend the FBI because the FBI never said, well, we need you to hack into Iran. Please do that because mm -hmm. um, we kind of need some stuff. Mm -hmm. They never told me that, mainly because of legality issues and mainly because I still had an open case. You know, I could have been able to go to court in front of the judge and say, well, they, they forced me to hack into, like, I don't know, pick a country. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, th this, is, this is crazy. I mean, what can I do regarding my case? You know, they were pretty legal about it. They just, they just said, just do what it is that you do. Um, or, basically, in regards to Operation Antisec, that was my doing. LawSec died. I was in a situation where they just want me to keep doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So they, I basically have some sort of green light to just continue being me. Well, okay, so we're going to create Operation Anti-Security, which is like, you know, a shout out to the old anti-sec of the 90s, which, I, you know, I loved um, and really enjoyed those times. So, you know, I kept on with the hacktivism, the idea of hackers uniting. I love the idea of getting an Indonesian hacker and, you know, uh, a Brazilian hacker or a Pakistani hacker and a Chinese hacker all to work together on operations. Um, I mean, it's wonderful. Like, it goes back to when I was reading the Hackers Manifesto. We are all alike. It doesn't matter our nationality, our race, or creed. We could work together for a common good. In this case, it was trying to expose oppression, corruption within, you know, governments around the world, tyrannical or not. Don't you think that message is a little bit tainted, though, given that you were at that point working with the FBI? Um, I don't know if it was tainted. I was still, still doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Working with the FBI is just, you know, a consequence of me getting caught. But it doesn't change what happened. It doesn't change my perspective. It doesn't change what I was doing. You know, I can, ha like, I, I can, I can continue my operations by all means. All right, guys, come on, let's do something. Um, yeah, there's a whole this riot in Greece. Okay, well, let's see what we can do about Greece. Mm -hmm. Now let's move to the present day. Uh, what sort of technologies are you using today? I mean, are you still online or using a PC? No, I, you know, I, I technically I could be online. Mm -hmm. I technically I could use a laptop, PC, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I choose not to because I am on supervised release. And I don't want to complicate that. Mm -hmm. I have a good relationship with, with the people over there. And, you know, so long as I don't start getting online and... I basically, to be real with you, I don't want to be in a situation where someone could frame me and say, well, I think Sabu's hacking again. And then the government is like, well, he hasn't been on a computer in a couple of years. I don't want to be in a situation where I'm online and someone frames me and I got to get investigated all over again. Sure. You know what? I'd rather just wait till, you know, five or six months from now mm -hmm. so I can live a normal life and then I'll get back online and then I'll just start, you know, whatever. Can I get your thoughts on the most recent Sony hack? Well, it's an interesting situation. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. It's an interesting situation because there's a lot of propaganda involved, there's a lot of misinformation, and let's just say like this. I don't want to go into details, mm -hmm. but Sony has been compromised for at least six years that I know of. The people that are claiming to be GOP or whatever it is now, I read in the newspaper, um, I wouldn't be surprised that those are the guys that originally owned Sony way back when. Mm -hmm that, you know, were in control of source codes, that were in control of, um, you know, movies and access to, you know, developer networks and all that. Um, this is not a new hack. Think about it. Let's do, let's, let's, let's really think about it. If you do a, a penetration test mm -hmm. and you're trying to infiltrate a network, um, the amount of access that these guys access, so the amount of access that they were able to obtain um, would have taken them several months, maybe even years, mm. um, especially since they were able to identify a lot of the, you know, for example, the password files. I don't really know, I don't know, like, from what the newspaper says, I don't know how all that information was dispersed. Um, but what if these files were all distributed across the network? So that means they had to go around, penetrate the entire network, accumulating password files as they went. Um, they had to access source codes, movies and all that, which I'm pretty sure was not hosted on one server. Mm -hmm. Clearly, they had to 
we really do a, uh, like a thorough audit of the entire infrastructure. So whoever hacked Sony has been inside there for a very, very long time. And uh, we haven't seen the end of it. Like, I think the next step, if, they, if, if the people at Sony haven't done already, is they should probably start changing their router passwords before these guys delete all the routes and bring Sony completely offline. Now, before this interview, I went online and asked for some questions from people on Twitter, basically seeing if they had any questions for you. As you can imagine, there's still a fair amount of animosity out there. How does that make you feel that so many of your former associates um, have pretty bad feelings about you at this point? Well, most of these people are not my former associates. Most of these people are just random people that, you know, I barely had a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Or if I did have some sort of conversation with them, then uh, it was pretty minimal. Um, you also have to look at these people. These are the same people that March 5th, 2012, loved me. Oh my God, Sabu, you're doing some great stuff. We hate the government, we hate Fox News. Now March 6th comes, oh my God, we hate Sabu, Fox News is the best, the government is completely right. Um, you have to believe their story. You have a major issue there. I mean, this is too wishy-washy, too flip-floppy, there's just, you can't, you can't be, you know, you can't have an opinion on, on both situations and just flip that quick and expect me to take you serious. Well, you were also saying around March 5th that you hated the government too. You Absolutely. You said, uh, the feds at this moment are scouring our lives without warrants, without judge's yeah. approval. This needs to change ASAP. Isn't that effectively what you were helping them do at the time? No, I wasn't identifying anybody. That's one thing I want to make clear, you know, because there's, there's like this big thing that they keep pushing. And mind you, all these ideas came from the Fox News stories and New York Times, mm -hmm. which basically recycled the Fox News story, um, you know, that I identified anybody. Okay, how can I identify anybody that I, I, I have no understanding of their location, their nationality, where they are, where they live, how they think, how they breathe. All I know is the pseudonym. If you read the logs and the evidence, and you know, if, if the people from the, like the Free Jeremy campaign are so mm -hmm. adamant that there's proof in their evidence that I brought him down or identified him, then leak the entire discovery. Get all the IRC logs out there and show the people. But they haven't done so. And they haven't done so because there's probably legality issues, but they haven't done so because mainly what's in there is just normal, random conversations. There's never one single instance where I'm like, hey, let's, let's imagine, you, you know, your, your pseudonym is Anani Tim, all right? Hey, Anani Tim. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's, your, what's your address? I want to send you something really cool. What's your name? Yo, can you, can you direct connect to me? Because I want to send you a picture of something funny. Um, you know, when you direct connect to somebody, mm -hmm. you're exposing your IP address, right? Mm -hmm. um, hey, do you have an email address I could send you, like, a dump? You know, like, all this information I never required, I never asked for. And when anyone was, you know, starting to, like, be, get too close to me, I would push them away. A lot of people really call me, like, you know, a jerk, right? They thought I was a jerk because, you know, I was so mean or whatever. You know, it's just that, just leave me alone. Like, I don't want to know about your life because I don't want you to one day say, oh, he entrapped me, he got me arrested. Just look at this situation. Um, you know, it's, it's a real shame and it's sad. Mm -hmm. I'm really against people going to prison except for like pedophiles or whatever, murderers. But it's really a shame that this guy's in prison. But you have to, you have to think about the situation. He committed crimes. He made mistakes. He was arrested by the FBI prior. Um, the FBI had a profile on him. He fit the profile. He got caught. I never put a gun up to his head, uh, to his head and said, hey, you got to hack Straffer, which he didn't even do anyway. Someone else hacked Straffer. So you want to sit here and judge me? You want to sit here and say, oh, well, he's mm -hmm. a rat. He's an informant. Um, well, listen, I'm sorry you feel that way. I don't really care what you have to think. Um, he made mistakes, he got caught, man up. I got caught, I had to do what I had to do. I dipped time in prison, it's not like I skipped through the entire process. I was in prison relaxed, I became a teacher in prison. How about you become a teacher in prison to stop you know, writing all this propaganda, you know? Um, I mean, I know that's not the popular opinion, right? People want me to sit here and apologize and have remorse. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's one of your questions. You know, does he have remorse for what he did? Well, I have remorse for my family that they had to suffer through this. And I have remorse for his mother that, you know, she's really pushing for to him to get released and have an appeal and all that. I have a lot of respect for that. And I understand how it feels to have a family member go to prison. I had three family members go to prison for 10 years. So I understand. 
Um, but it's time that people see the situation as it is. We all are criminals, right? We made mistakes, we got caught. Mm -hmm. Accept it. Speaking of family, is your family still together? Were you able to keep custody of your Absolutely, your yes. yeah. It's great to hear. Yeah. So what's, what's next for you? What do you hope to do from here going forward? Well, I mean, when I was in prison, I had a great opportunity to get to know people um, from different walks of life. And this is actually a really good point I wanted to make in regards to the, the whole topic we were just talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I got to meet a lot of really cool people from different walks of life with different situations, being in prison for you know, murder or whatever. Um, the thing that I noticed, a lot of these people had no understanding of like their privacy rights or how mm -hmm. to protect themselves, okay? I'm pretty sure some of them were criminals, like murderers, mm -hmm. like I'm not down mm -hmm. for that, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. But there were other people there that, were, that simply got caught up in conspiracies. Do you know how easy it is to be caught up in a conspiracy? I mean, you can have someone, a friend of yours, call you like, hey, um, you know, I have some oxys, you want some? You're like, sure, why not? Um, and you know it's illegal. So now, boom, you're part of the conspiracy well, as soon as you go visit him to get the oxys. And the feds are listening, they're gonna pick you and him up, and guess what, that conspiracy charge is a minimum of 10 years, all right? So, um, I feel like I want to help prisoners. I feel like I feel like I want to help people in general with understanding privacy, mm. bringing privacy to nonprofits. I mean, look, uh, talking to media and journalists in general, I find that a lot of companies, um, news people, have no understanding of security whatsoever. Um, I made a good point on you know another talk that I had regarding a certain interviewer who didn't probably didn't control his own email. And this is a common trait within people in media, where they have interns or other people controlling their communications. Mm. But when you do that, you provide us, right, us, but you provide hackers um, an alternative attack vector, right? The same way the government provides hackers an, uh, an alternative attack vector by hiring federal contractors to essentially handle all their security communications. Um, so it's time that people start you know, getting educated um, they start getting educated and have people like me and others just talk about it. Um, so I, that's what I want to do. I'm, I, I'm, I'm a teacher by heart. Like I want to, I want to teach at some point and uh, help people, you know, with security because that's apparently my forte. That's what I'm into. So I hope you have an opportunity to do so. Hector, thank you for your time. Thank you.